All right, this is Maker. What do you think? So Maker is our full-scale, two-passenger demonstrator aircraft. And its purpose is to serve as a certification test bed and also to help us keep pushing our key enabling technologies. So this aircraft is a result of a really large group of people that have come together across many different disciplines, including flight physics and avionics and structures and many others. And we're so excited to show you the vehicle here today. So let's talk through a couple of those key engineering features that will enable the urban air mobility market. Maker was engineered from the ground up for the urban traveler. This means designing a new aircraft that can fit into the fabric of cities. In order to do this, we had to design an aircraft for record safety and low noise. We also wanted to make sure that this was a service that everybody could access, which means it needed to be a high throughput network. From a vehicle engineering perspective, a big enabler for us is distributed electric propulsion. Instead of using big turbine or piston engines, which are extremely complex, we are using electric motors, which are much simpler and more energy efficient. Electric motors can be scaled down to enable a new type of aircraft to be built, one that has many motors and high energy efficiency. What we're doing here could have never been possible before. As we designed the aircraft, safety was our number one goal. First, distributed electric propulsion allows us to, to design in multiple redundant electric motors. We no longer have a single motor that's powering flight. Maker has six independent battery packs that power 12 electric motors. These motors are distributed laterally across the aircraft wing, as you can see here. During flight, we can tolerate an entire battery pack system failure or, or two motor failures and still fly the mission safely. In fact, Maker has zero single points of failure. For comparison, most helicopters have hundreds of these single points of failure. Let's talk a little bit about noise. Our aircraft will be operated directly overhead, so it's important that we do not disturb our local neighbors. Helicopter noise is simply too loud today to make helicopters work in a real way across cities. Majority of noise generated from a helicopter come from high rotor tip speeds. The blades on the helicopter are traveling close to 450 miles an hour. Since we are spinning 12 rotors that are much smaller, we can spin them slower, resulting in lower tip speed and much different nose profile, much lower noise. We have designed the propellers on the aircraft specifically for low noise. The propellers spin at low, uh, low tip speeds virtually eliminating the loud wop-wop sound that we associate with helicopters today. And during flight, we're going to be traveling at 2,000 feet above ground level. And just for a bit of a comparison versus a helicopter, we'll be traveling at that altitude at 100 times quieter than a helicopter. This is similar to the sound of a refrigerator running. And lastly, is we want everyone to have access to our service, which means we need to design a high-throughput transportation network. And what that means is we need to travel fast, and we need to use the vehicles a lot during the day. Maker's designed to travel speeds of 150 miles an hour or more. We are designing for nominal missions between 20 and 40 miles, and we designed a long-range battery that was capable of much more than this, so we don't have to fully charge after every trip. For our flights, we'll be using around 30% of our battery pack. And the battery is meant to be fast charged while on the ground which means it only takes about 10 minutes to charge enough before it's ready for the next flight. That means that the Archer aircraft can do over 40 flights per day. This will help unlock a high throughput transportation system for the masses. Adam, can you talk a little bit about how people are gonna interact with the aircraft? Yeah, so when we designed Maker, we thought about the urban traveler. How do we give them an experience that they're gonna love? So we thought about, you know, maybe they have a backpack, maybe they have a full set of luggage coming back from a weekend excursion, or maybe they just have a coffee. And so we wanted to work the vehicle into their everyday life and really just give them an experience that'll blow them away. Brett, why don't we pop the doors and have them take a look inside? Let's do it. All right, so the first thing you notice is we have gold wing doors. 
definitely the most badass kind of doors you can put on any aircraft. <laughs> There's also a high wing. We did that because we wanted to make the aircraft really approachable. We wanted to make it have this sense of safety and comfort as you walk towards it. Right? So why don't we head on towards the back here. So let's say you're coming back from a weekend trip. There's uh, plenty of room here for a full set of luggage. You could push it right in. Plenty of room, no problem. But Brett, why don't we hop inside? So it's actually super comfortable. And for those of you that are here, we want to invite you guys down after the show to come sit and see for yourself. But you know, these are performance seats, really unmatched to anything in aviation. And there's plenty of leg room. Brett, how tall are you? About six foot tall. Brett's about 6'2". He's modest. So if you stretch out, plenty of room. No problem fitting in here. And you could easily fit a bag, maybe even two bags. When you sit back, you can see there is a 270 degree wraparound viewing area. We wanted to let you sit back, take it all in, have fun, enjoy the flight. Really get to experience that you're flying over everything. You'll also see at the very front of the aircraft, there's actually no flight controls in Maker. And that's because Maker is an autonomous aircraft, even though the aircraft we will bring to market will be piloted. There's also a touch screen at the front of the aircraft that will give all the key relevant metrics that we could need. Pre-flight check-ins, airspeed, distance to our destination, or even if your ground transportation is there waiting for you. When we designed Maker, we took an automotive approach to noise, vibration, and harshness. We wanted the ride quality to be really smooth, really quiet cabin. We also designed our flight controls to make sure we could have a really stable, smooth flight from start to beginning. All right, Brett, why don't we hop out and tell them what's next? We built Maker to be a certification testbed and also to advance our key enabling technologies. Today, you're seeing the rollout of Maker. Maker will begin ground tests and then hover flights later this year. We'll then work to expand the flight envelope from hover to full cruise speeds of over 150 miles an hour. For the last year and a half, we've been working closely with the FAA on our certified aircraft, which will be much like Maker, but it'll be piloted and four passengers. We will open manufacturing for that aircraft next year, and we will enter operations in 2024. We also have announced two launch cities, Los Angeles and Miami. So what will this experience be like? We wanted to bring this to life for everybody here today, so we built a flight simulator to walk you through the journey of what it's going to be like using the Archer network in your everyday lives. Do you want to go take a ride? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. I like this. I mean, just not a possibility that open up here. I mean, it's pretty cool. Years of hard engineering work has gotten us here. Uh, we have, you know, certification and manufacturing as we're gearing up, and um, really excited to think about making this an everyday use case for for everybody in the world. Yeah, I mean, just looking out the window and just the perspective that you get as you fly over it all, um, it makes traveling fun. And, you know, it just, you know, we, I think about the 2D round transportation grid that was built, right? It's pretty limiting. It's really tough to scale, but we can fly over it all in a straight line, 150 miles per hour. It opens up the amount of possibilities considerably. Yeah, I mean, if you look back the last 100 years, every new transportation solution we had that made us move faster allowed us to access new places we couldn't have otherwise before. So as we move from horse and buggy to the car, we now we can drive to further places uh, than ever before. And now as we're flying in the air, 150 miles an hour, point to point, we'll be able to access new locations that we otherwise couldn't have on the ground in a car. And so we get really excited about how people are gonna interact now with cities and beyond. Yeah, and the way that cities have really, you know, kind of come together, they're very polycentric. You have these mini city centers that are inside these larger cities. So take Los Angeles, for example. 
You know, we're here in Hawthorne, but there's big communities in Santa Monica and then in Pasadena, and then in Orange County, right? You have millions of people in each of these little mini city centers and they want to connect with each other. They want to be able to move back and forth. But right now, it's quite limiting. I mean, the ground infrastructure in these cities is basically intrinsically limited by the architecture itself. If we think about a tunnel or subway, every new stop that we add, so say we add a 10 stop to a subway, those are asking nine stops I have to go to to get to the 10th location. The Archer network is driven by a data science project called Prime Radiance, and it'll be a nodal network. We'll have different locations across the city where you can take off and land from. And every new location we add, so in this case, a 10th new stop, will open up nine new locations that people can access that weren't there before. Yeah, and just think about the cost of building that ground infrastructure, you know, for traditional transportation. You know, building that 10th subway stop is billions of dollars and could take a decade to build. But the ground infrastructure that we need is actually pretty simple. You know, just take, you know, parking garages, right? They're perfectly located within the middle of these cities. And that's the type of infrastructure that we need. All we would have to do is just lightly retrofit a parking garage with charging infrastructure. And then now you have a, another additional takeoff and landing area. Yeah, and as we're coming in for landing, I mean, these are really 10 or 15 minute trips that we're enabling for folks to take in the air, point to point, instead of being able to travel on the ground, you know, taking an hour or more. And we think this will help enable a new generation of travelers and one that can move into the third dimension. And we think this is possible to do in a future that we're excited and inspired to wake up every day to. All right, well, I really enjoyed that flight. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. When we started, we posted on our website all of our plans, our goals. Our first step was to build an aircraft to demonstrate the capabilities of electric vertical takeoff and landing. And you're seeing that here today with the rollout of Maker. And we're excited to fully demonstrate these capabilities. Our second step is to certify an aircraft that is just as safe as commercial airliners. And for the last year and a half, we've been working closely with the FAA on our piloted four-passenger aircraft. Safety is our number one goal. And there's a multi-year roadmap to design around high safety. Our third step is to launch commercial routes in cities and integrate autonomous systems for safety. We're excited to have Maker at the forefront of our autonomous capabilities and we're pushing hard on engineering problems such as GPS denied navigation and sense and avoid. We announced earlier this year we'll be launching in both Los Angeles and Miami, both incredible partners for us with lots of traffic, ideal infrastructure for landing sites, and communities very proactive to reduce congestion and move to a sustainable form of transportation. Thank you all for joining us tonight for the unveil we're excited to have everyone along for our journey. <laughs>